everyone. Welcome to this session about Symfony. Um, so Symfony started 10 years ago, actually. So we are celebrating the 10 years of Symfony this year. Uh, and a bit like Drupal, it started uh, by being a one-man show. It was just me coding Symfony. Um, it, it's a bit different from Drizzt because at that time I, I um, I was in a web agency called Sensio, uh, and so I created Symfony uh, not just for the fun of it, but because I needed something for my customers. Right? So Symfony was created because we needed to create um, good projects, good projects with PHP. And 2005 was the first release of PHP 5. So. Symfony actually started as a PHP 5 only project, which means that from day one, we were able to use all the nice features um, that come with PHP 5. <coughs> um, so, nowadays, Symfony 2 is totally different from the project that I created uh, 10 years ago. Uh, Symfony 1, version 1, was a totally different project. We started from scratch. Um, about six years ago, trying to learn, you know, about all our mistakes and all the things that we uh, got wrong with the first version, and also because we realized that, beside being a framework, Symfony has the potential to become a set of libraries that you can use um, independently, and that was the key point with Symfony 2, being able to give you developers a lot of independent components that you can use for your own projects. The second thing uh, for Symfony 2 was trying to uh, stick with best practices. And that's why we have an HTTP foundation and HTTP kernel components. Uh, the goal was really to try to stick to HTTP as much as possible. Trying to not reinvent the wheel, trying to not have a Symfony way of doing things. That's also why we have dependency injection. That's why we have a dependency injection container. Uh, Symfony was actually the first framework in the PHP world to uh, propose such uh, a container. Um, and again, it was not because it was fun, just because at some point we had so many different components that we needed a way to um, create the glue between all the components. And the only way to be able to do that in a decoupled way was to actually use dependency injection. And then, to create a full stack framework, being able to, com to uh, configure all those services, um, having access to a container made things really easy. So, I'm not going to talk too much about Symfony and, 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 and um, uh, the stories behind, behind the framework, but uh, nowadays, if you have a look at packages, which is the uh, website where um, all Composer packages are referenced. Uh, Symfony and all its components have been uh, downloaded millions of times now, which means that we have uh, a great community of developers using the components. Uh, for open source projects like Drupal, so we have something like 50 different major PHP projects using more one or more uh, components components uh, coming from Symfony but also for your private project, of course. Um, and the, fi the, the, the fact that we are used, and Symfony is used by so many projects out there, uh, means that we have a great responsibility, right? A framework is the baseline. It is uh, the foundation uh, you are using to build something on top of it. And which means that we can't do uh, bad things like breaking backward compatibility every other year or uh, so we need to have good practices there uh, we need to give you uh, visibility on what's happening in the code uh, things like that and I'm going to talk about this challenge and how we build a methodology and tools to help us be sure um, that we can guarantee backward compatibility between all the versions um, the latest version of Symfony is 2.6. The next one is going to be 2.7 to be released at the end of the year, uh, the month, actually. 
Uh, so in a couple of weeks from now, 2.7 is just an evolution from 2.6, uh, but we still have 100 new features, big and small, really. Um, and I think the main point of Symphony 2.7 is performance, uh, and some of the components were quite slow, and we worked out uh, making sure that they are actually much faster than they used to be. Um, and that's the case, for instance, for the translation component uh, and a few other ones. Uh, we also work a lot on the seri serializer component, which is used by Drupal, so um, it's going to be uh, super useful for, for, for you as well. Okay, so the first thing is we want predictability. Um, if projects depend on Symfony, you must know when a new um, version is coming out so that you can plan ahead of time the migration to the new version. Which means that Symfony is not, um, the releases are not based on features, but on a date. So we know that the Symfony 2.7 version is going to be released by the end of the month. And I can tell you when the next version is going to be released as well. Um, and the next 10 releases, uh, as a matter of fact. And that's very important for a private project, but that's, that's also very, very useful for open source ones. Which means that some projects, like Laravel, um, they try to sync um, their releases with uh, Symfony so that they can upgrade from uh, the current version they are using to the next one um, easily. So you know what to expect. Uh, if you want to uh, have more information about our roadmap, you can go to symphony.com slash roadmap. I think I'm going to switch to uh, browser here. Um, ah, okay. So here you can see, so this is a page, so the current version uh, is two, oh, okay, so the current version is actually 2.6 which is what we call a standard release. A standard release uh, is uh, maintained for a year and six months uh, after that for security issues. We also have long-term support releases and the current one is 2.3 and an LTS is maintained for three years and one year for um, security issues, so four years in total. And the next LTS is going to be 2.7. And so if you want to know anything about a version, you can just type the other version, you can check, and we give you all the dates uh, when it was released, the end of support, the end of support for security fixes. Right. Uh, you can also get the same information as a JSON um, file so that you can integrate that into your tools if that makes sense. This is the roadmap. Um, and so, okay, I'm going to talk about this later on. So, we also have a backward compatible promise. So, there is a page on the symphony.com um, website. Okay, I'm going to switch one from one window to the next one. A lot here. Um, so, this page, uh, not this one, this one, symphony.com slash bc. And then we list exactly our rules uh, regarding backward compatibility. So you can know exactly what to expect when you upgrade from one version to the next one. It's very detailed, uh, so uh, I'm not going to talk about everything here, but you can see um, all the use cases for classes, classes methods, uh, interfaces, and so on. So we tell you what we can do with regular methods or API ones. I'm going to talk about the API uh, later on. So I highly recommend you to read this document if you're working with Symfony because it tells you everything you need to know about backward compatibility in the Symfony world. And by the way, it took us a lot of time uh, to get to this point. So if you want to do the same things, uh, you can probably just copy and paste what we've done here and adapt to your project. Um, it's open source, so feel free to um, get inspiration from what we've done. 
So basically, we, we try to follow semantic versioning. Um, and semantic versioning is easy to grasp, easy to understand, very difficult to actually uh, make it work for a project. Uh, it's all, always very easy to break backward compatibility in some ways um, in minor versions. So semantic versioning means that uh, any two point X plus one versions are compatible with the previous one, so 2.x, right? Um, it's not the case for the development versions, alpha versions, beta versions, release candidates, um, everything under the test directory, so all the tests, of course, we don't need to maintain backward compatibility. That's also not the case for any class or method tagged with add internal, right? And private stuff, obviously. So we do have some public methods tagged with internal just because of PHP limitation and the fact that we are still supporting PHP 5.3. So that's not going to be the case anymore in, in Symfony 3 um, because we're going to drop uh, compatibility with all the version of PHP. But right now we do have probably 10 methods that are public but really private. And anything public or protected uh, can be a class, a property, a method, argument, type int, cannot be modified in any way. Uh, so if for any given set of input, we must have the same output, right? Um, and that's the biggest uh, problem that we are facing. And that's also why in Symfony, we have a lot of private methods, a lot of them. By default, everything is private in Symfony protected and pub public are only when we want to provide an extension for it. If not, everything is private. It makes our lives as maintainers um, much, um, it, it makes our life much easier because then we know that everything that is private, we can refactor it the way we want. Uh, and it helps a lot. And even for protected uh, method, for instance, we need to be sure that we keep inheritance working the right way, which means that even we, if we deprecate uh, a protected method, we still need to call it because if you override a class with a protected method uh, and you rely on this specific behavior, we need to keep it. So it's not, it, it, it can be a, a bit complex. So let me show you an example, a quick one here. Um, So kernel here, uh, we have an init method here. It has been deprecated in 2.3. And if you actually call this method, uh, you will have a deprecation notice. I'm going to talk about this later on. But then we still call it here in the constructor, uh, because if not, we are breaking backward compatibility. But as you can see, to be able to do that, uh, it's a bit complex. It's not trivial. Because we need to be sure that when you create an init method in, uh, in a class that extends kernel, you must have uh, uh, the deprecation notice. If not, you should not. So internally, we are calling the method, but we don't want to have uh, the trigger. So it's not really interesting for uh, developers uh, using Symfony as a framework. It's very interesting to understand that it takes us a lot of time to maintain backward compatibility between all other releases. Okay, so uh, here is another example. So simple stuff like, you know, moving things around. So we have this uh, class, which was part of HTTP kernel, but at some point we decided that it was, it would have been better to actually move that to the debug uh, component. And actually, when we created this class, the debug component, did not exist. So we decided just to move the namespace, uh, but we keep backward compatibility. And if we have a look at the code, uh, it's not that easy to get right. So if, um, what is this? So this, uh, it's here. So this one is the old one. And if you 
call it directly. So if you instantiate this class directly, uh, it's going to trigger the auto loading. Uh, and then you're going to have uh, this trigger error method that is called, which is going to add a notice in your logs telling you that you can't use this method anymore because it is deprecated. And then it, it loads the new one. But if you have a look at the new one, it's, it's here. But we extend this class, which is defined here in the old namespace. And that's because we need to keep backward compatibility with type ints. So even if you added a type int for the old class, we need to make it work uh, with the new namespace. So that's a lot of code that we need to add to make sure that whatever you're doing with the code, we do maintain backward compatibility. Okay, so 2.x plus 1 is compatible with 2.x or 2.x minus 1 minus 2, etc. 3.0 can break backward compatibility, but what we are not doing is we do not add new features in 3.0 because there is no need to wait for 3.0 to actually add new features, which means that all the new features that you will have in 3.0 are actually already available in 2.x. So whenever we want to add a new feature, we add that in the 2.x branch. And of course, if this new feature means that we need to duplicate something, all the duplication notices are also part of uh, the 2.x plus one version. So do not expect any new features in 3.0, uh, as I said before. 3.0 is mainly the latest 2.x version minus all the duplication notices and all the deprecated features, really. So, and, and also the compatibility layers, right? So it's more about cleaning the code than anything else. And we are breaking backward compatibility be because we are removing this uh, layer of compatibility. But of course, whenever possible, we try to keep backward compatibility between Symphony 2 and Symphony 3. So Symphony 2.7, uh, we thought it was the last version of Symphony 2, and actually it won't be. Uh, we are going to have an additional version for 2.x uh, uh, branch, which is going to be 2.8, and 2.8 is going to be released at the same time same time as 3.0 for a very simple reason. We want you to be able to wait until the next 3.x LTS version to upgrade from 2. Point something to 3. Point something else. If it's not clear, please interrupt me, ask any questions anytime. Um, so let me recap. Um, if you are using a Symphony standard version, you need to upgrade every six months. And we give you six months to upgrade. So you can upgrade every year, something like that. But sometimes you don't want to upgrade every six months. So we also have the LTS releases. We have one LTS release every two years, which means that we need to synchronize all the LTS releases, right? But the thing is, if 2.7 is the last LTS release and 3.2 is the next one, you won't have a year to upgrade, but just six months. Just because of that, we decided to add another LTS release for Symphony 2, which is going to be 2.8. That's the first reason. The second one is, if we uh, didn't have this um, 2.8 release, uh, it would have meant that the 2.7 release was the last time where we would have been able to add new features. Remember, we do not add new features in 3.0, which means that from now to November, we would not have been able to add any new features. And that's a big problem. So that's also why we added 2.8. So 2.8 and 3.0 are going to be released at the end of November this year. Same feature set, big difference, 3.0 will have all the compatibility layer removed. So 2.0 is, is 3.0 plus uh, the compatibility layers. Okay, so now 
we want to provide a very simple path of migration from 2.8 to 3.0. So how can we do that? So whenever we add a new feature, we add it in the change log. So if you want to learn more about the new features, you can uh, go to the change log. We reference everything there. Uh, all the duplications are also part of the upgrade file. So that's how you can upgrade your project from one version to the next one, uh, which means also that if you want to be compatible with 3.0, you can start to do it today. Just have a look at the upgrade file and do all uh, the needed changes there. And we also add a deprecated tag uh, with some commands about uh, the new way of doing things in the code directory. So that's also something that you can have a look at. So in November, during the SymphonyCon in Madrid, uh, we decided to add all those deprecation notices. Right? So it took us a lot of time. Uh, it took us about three months to add all the deprecation notices everywhere. So this is just one big uh, pull request doing that but we had many of them though. So the goal is that whenever you, you run your code in the PHP logs, you have all the warnings telling you uh, you can't use this, this method anymore because it is duplicated, so please use this other one or something like that. And of course, uh, we got a lot of frustrated users uh, because Symfony itself used deprecated stuff. Right, so just by running Symfony itself uh, on uh, Hello World, um, just the, the, the unit test, uh, we had more than 200,000 notices for Symfony itself. And that's why at some point people um, tried to get rid of all those uh, notices. So the second step for us was to add an extension to PHP unit so that whenever we run the test, at the end of the test, shoot, you have a summary of all the duplicated stuff that you are using, right? And we started to um, update the code of Symfony to reduce those number of notices from uh, 200,000 to zero today. And it took a lot of time. Um, this is one such commit. And then we realized that it was not enough. It was not enough because uh, dynamic code is much more complex and, and, and no, uh, and, and one such example is interfaces, for instance. Uh, so because we need to keep the type ints uh, working for your code, we need to be able to load all those, we need to type in internally with deprecated interfaces. But we don't want to have the notices in this case. We only want the notice if you are using a deprecated uh, interface. So we need to do that dynamically, so again, we added um, in the debug class loader of Symfony a check that actually uh, warns you if you are using the interface and doesn't do anything if it is internal. So we have a lot of examples like that and uh, it took a lot of time for us to um, make the process work uh, the right way. Um, and then what we're going to change now is that we realized that adding all those notices at the end so we added and we duplicated stuff since Symfony 2.3, so in 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7. It's really a nightmare to add all those notices after the fact. So for Symfony 2.8 and for any version of 3.x really, whenever we add a new feature, we will add the duplicated tag right away so that we don't have to do that uh, in two or three years from now. Um, and we also add a trigger uh, notice uh, in the code where appropriate. And of course, we enforce the fact that we should not and we must not use any duplicated uh, stuff in Symfony. So zero notices in Symfony itself and the Symfony components. Is it enough? Unfortunately, no. It's not enough because in your project, you might use some of the components in the 2.3 version, some of them in the 2.6 version, and then some other ones in 3.0. Which means that we need to be sure that all those com combinations can work, actually. So, but by default, Composer use the latest version of all the components in your requirement, right? So if you are 
uh, using Symfony 2.7, you will get all the Symfony 2.7 um, dependencies. But in your composer.json file, you might say, I'm compatible with any version starting from Symfony 2.3, but how can you be sure that is, that is still uh, the, true, the truth? And, uh, and the fact is, you can't, really, because in Composer, there, there was no way to do that. So what we want to be able to do is to say, okay, for any 2.x component, I want to check that it works for any other 2.x version of all the components um, that I'm using as dependencies here, here and also with 3.0. And for 3.0, I want to make sure that it works for 3.0, of course, but also for 2.8. That way we can be sure that we are compatible um, all the way from 2.8 to 3.0. So we added two new flags to Composer to make it work, uh, prefer lowest and prefer stable. That way we can say uh, whenever we are running the test, we are running the test for the low lowest stable version but also for the latest version that is not necessarily stable, right? And if you uh, want to have a look at how it works, uh, have a look at the .travis.yaml file in Symfony. Uh, so we are testing on a lot of different versions of PHP, and then you can see an environment variable here, depths low or depths high. What it means is that in this case, I want to use the lowest versions possible. It also helped us upgrade our composer.json files because we realized that we were saying that we were compatible with this version of Symfony component A, but in actually uh, the code did not work. So we tweaked all the composer.json files to uh, reflect the reality of the code and not just uh, what we had a few years ago, really. Um, okay, so have a look at the code uh, here. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, um, but then what about the tests themselves? Because, so in the 2.x versions, we deprecated stuff, but we still do have the test for them, of course, because we don't want to break um, stuff. But in 3.0, the code is not there anymore, which means that if we want to make the test run for all the versions, we need a way to say, okay, you can't run uh, this test in 3.0 because the code is not there anymore, right? So what we had is we have a group legacy tag for all our duplicated tests. So whenever we have a test uh, that is about something that is not um, relevant anymore, we add this group legacy tag uh, to the test which means that by default we exclude this group uh, when running the test on Symfony 2.0. And you can see that on the Travis, uh, in the Travis configuration. Really. Is it clear enough? Yeah? I'm sure. <laughs> okay, um, so that's how we can make sure in the code that things work the way um, they need to work. And then we can guarantee that because um, the core team makes sure that you are doing the right thing, you are adding the duplicated stuff uh, whenever it is needed. Uh, we check with Travis that we don't break uh, unit test. Uh, so we have a lot of, um, a lot of um, tools and methodology to make sure that we actually um, have uh, backward compatibility between all the versions. Okay, so it was the first step. It's done now uh, with simply 2.7, but then what about the ecosystem? So what about your code? What about open source libraries using Symfony? And the thing is, you must do the exact same thing that we are doing if you want to be sure that you will be able to upgrade from uh, Symfony 2.6 to uh, Symfony 3.0. So we did the work uh, with some of the main uh, Symfony bundles and, and uh, libraries, really, uh, 
so we fixed all the duplication notices and we enabled the test on Symfony 3.0. So I highly recommend you that you are doing the same with Drupal uh, just to see what you are using today and if you are not using too many um, duplicated features. And the good news is that you can migrate today uh, to be sure that you don't have any uh, notices. That's totally possible. It's even easier for you because you can break backward compatibility, right? On Drupal 2.8, uh, 8, 8, Drupal 8, you can still break PC or not? Yeah, somehow. Okay, so do that on Friday during the sprints. I can help you if you uh, if you need to. Um, to make it easy, we also uh, published a PHP unit bridge uh, that automates uh, a lot of what I've just talked about. Um, and again, it took months for us to get it right, so uh, you might want to reuse what, what we've done. Um, oops, sorry. Um, so the way it works is that you just require the Symfony slash PHP unit dash bridge um, library in your composer.json file the require dash dev um, section. And then it's going to be enabled whenever you run a PHP unit. So that's how we have, oh, okay, I haven't shown it yet. It's interesting. So if you go on, not this window, but this one, if you go on Travis, uh, Symfony, can see at the end of uh, the run, you have this line here, and it says that we have uh, this many deprecation notices, which is fine because we are actually testing uh, old stuff. But if those deprecation notices were coming from code that is not deprecated, you would have a warning and the test would have been read right, to be sure that we never ever uh, merge a pull request with such a problem. I don't, I don't think that I have uh, an example here because we are very strict now about that, but hmm. let's have a look at this one for instance. something different, that's something different. Anyway, um, okay. Okay, so this is the methodology that you can take for your own project uh, if you depend on Symfony. Uh, you can read the upgrade file. Uh, so you need to read all the upgrades files from all the versions of Symfony uh, really to upgrade your code, so starting from 2.3. Um, you must not ignore any notices, uh, that's why we have the PHP unit bridge. Uh, of course, you need tests on your code to make it work. If you do not have tests for some features, we won't be able to tell you that you have problems. Um, one thing is that we cannot uh, give you any information about duplicated constants and we have some of them, uh, these ones, so I'm not sure if you are using those, uh, you should not, uh, so, but those should be done uh, by hand. Um, and also, I think th th there is the same problem with Drupal. Uh, the very first request is very different from the next ones, right, because during the very first request, we warm up the cache, which means that we are running some code that won't run anymore for all the other requests, right? So you need to be careful to actually check all the notices coming from this very first request when the cache is actually warmed up. Right? If not, you're going to have some problems. Um, PHP Storm is also a good IDE because it catches all duplicated tags, which means that within the IDE, 
it's going to tell you that you are using something that is obsolete here. Uh, so that's also a good way to uh, spot problems and, and to easily upgrade uh, those problems. Um, last but not the least, uh, as we are triggering uh, duplicated notices, uh, you should exclude them on your production servers uh, because, you know, um, at, at first you might have thousands of such notices. So if you enable them in production, you're going to have a lot of uh, notices in the logs. Uh, it can be a problem, so you can fill up your disk pretty fast. Uh, so at first, disable that uh, on your production servers, enable that only in your um, staging or development or testing environments. Okay, um, so then I'm just going to talk about this slide, for instance, which is about Twig, uh, because we are, we are also duplicating a lot of stuff in Twig. The most important ones are the two first ones for Drupal. The first one is the render tag. The second one is the include tag. I'm not sure if you are using them. Uh, I haven't checked recently. Uh, but if you are doing that, you must replace them with the functions, uh, and the names are exactly the same. So for the render tag, you must choose the render function. And for the include tag, you must choose the include function. So just use grep, ack, uh, it's, it's really easy to uh, make the change here. Um, the class loader, so again, uh, you must upgrade to the latest uh, versions uh, of the classes. So we've done that uh, way back in the past, so it should be easy to upgrade from uh, the old one to the new one. It's mainly about renaming uh, of the classes and that's all. Dependency injection. Um, so Drupal is using dependency injection and the container from coming from Symfony a lot. Uh, scopes are going to be removed from Symfony 2.0 because we don't need them anymore. Uh, it was a big mistake uh, to actually uh, introduce them in the first place. We were mainly using it for uh, the request, uh, but it was, uh, the, the, the problem was not uh, that we did not have the right way to manage uh, to manage the, uh, the request in the DIG, it was just because uh, adding the request as a service was a big mistake. A request, an HTTP request, is actually not a service. So in Symfony, starting from Symfony 2.0, uh, I don't remember, 4, I think, yeah, 2.4, uh, instead of the request service, you must use the request stack service where, uh, and this is a service that gives you access to the current request or uh, the parent one if you are using um, stacked requests, really. And synchronized is also uh, duplicated because it was added again just because we add request as a service. And that's an interesting story by itself. Just because we did this big mistake of defining the, the request as a service, we added a bunch of features in a container just to be able to deal with this mistake. It took us, you know, a lot of time adding those crazy stuff, the scopes and, and synchronized, and, uh, it, and, and actually it was really a nightmare to maintain, and it, we have so many edge cases and stuff going on, really. And then we just realized that, you know, the request is not a service. Bam, everything was really easier, and we can remove so many lines of code from Symfony just because we did this mistake. Um, and the last one is about factories. Uh, so the way we configure factories is a bit different now. It's not, it was not a big deal, but it was mostly because now we have more flexibility with the new way of defining the factories. So again, uh, this uh, change in the configuration should not be difficult um, to change in your code. And in and Drupal code, uh, are you using synchronized uh, the synchronized feature in, in in Drupal? At some point, I know that you were using that, but I'm not sure if it's the case anymore. Not anymore. Okay. Okay. Cool. And you're not using scopes anymore. 
Okay, that's great. That's great news. Small changes in routing. Uh, we renamed pattern to path because it makes more sense. Uh, we also removed, uh, we had specialized uh, routing classes for Apache, uh, and the goal was uh, to make it really fast or faster when you are using Apache, but at some point we realized that those classes made uh, the routing stuff uh, slower, actually, uh, instead of faster, uh, because of caching problems and stuff, whatever, so they are removed from Symfony 3.0. In the console, uh, okay, so here it's mainly about refactoring uh, mistakes that we did, and, and we actually uh, made a lot of mistakes, so we are trying to fix them uh, step by step, which is which takes time because we need to maintain the core compatibility. So uh, again, it's it's uh, mainly about best practices here. For the event dispatcher, we removed those methods uh, mainly because they are not that useful, and it makes the event dispatcher. Um, slower, so that's why we removed them. Uh, we removed the logger interface from HTTP kernel because back then PSR four, three, four, PSR about the logging stuff um, uh, did not exist. It exists, so we can remove that now. Uh, I've talked about in it uh, and stuff. Okay, uh, everything else is uh, really not that interesting. Uh, okay, the serializer, uh, we removed those, those methods because they did not really make sense. Uh, they, was not, they were not available in the interfaces anyway, so uh, we now have exceptions everywhere, so you don't have to uh, fall back to this weird PHP mechanism of dealing with uh, errors, really. Um, and that's it. Uh, so let's do it. Uh, if you need any help upgrading Drupal for uh, Symfony 2.7, please don't hesitate. Uh, we are here to help. And if you want to celebrate uh, the 10 year anniversary of Symfony, uh, you can come to the uh, SymfonyCon Paris conference. It's going to be uh, at the beginning of December this year. Uh, it's going to be at the Folie Bergère, which is a very well-known theater in Paris. We expect more than 1,000 one one thousand people there, uh, so it's going to be fun. And that's all, that's all for today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So the thing is, so I think we did, we never actually talked about using uh, this mechanism, uh, probably because we did not have any use, that many use cases where it would have been helpful, really. So uh, in Symfony, we try to standardize on one way of doing things uh, as much as possible. And I think the number of use cases where it would have been uh, interesting it was just not enough. That's a very good question. So actually, maintaining a version is not that hard for us. Uh, what we're doing is, whenever we fix a bug, uh, we merge a pull request in the oldest uh, 
version of Symfony that is st still maintained. And then we merge this version into the most recent one. That way we are sure that all a fix is actually available in all versions that are maintained. And uh, the thing is, it is almost always easier to merge from all versions instead of you know jumping from one version to you know a much newer one uh, because you can resolve conflicts step by step. Uh, we are not doing that right now because at some point you need to say, okay, we are we are going to maintain that for that many years and, and then we need to stop. Um, that being said, again, maintaining a version for longer is, is it's not really a big deal. So that's something we can do. And I know that you know 2.4 and 2.5 are not maintained anymore, but we could do that. Uh, so I'm doing all the releases, so uh, it is a lot of time, but actually it's a lot of time because uh, we need to release uh, the Symphony package, all the components, uh, so those are subtree split, so we have one Git repository for every component, so that takes time. And then we have the Symphony standard edition, we have the Zen packages for our Zen server, we have, we have a bunch of stuff. Uh, so that's why it takes time. But if we are just talking about being able to release just Symphony and all the components and tag that and be done with it, it's much easier. So I it's possible. It's not that hard. Uh, so you are maintaining Drupal for five years? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm just <laughs> yeah, random. Okay. Uh, so actually, do you have LTSs? No, you don't have LTSs for Drupal. It's just all the versions are maintained for how many years? Oh, okay, two versions. So it, it can be five years. It can be, yeah, it can be longer, obviously. Um, so that's that's probably a discussion that we can have when Drupal 8 is released. So depending on which version you're going to, to use for uh, Drupal 8, uh, we might say that we are going to maintain 2.8 for three years or the time it takes for Drupal to release Drupal 10, right? Something like that. So we can discuss that. Week two, actually. Uh, I'm not sure yet. So what I wanted to be able to do is having tweak, tweak two to be compatible with tweak one as much as possible. Then people convinced me that it was not needed, which means that the current version of tweak 2.0, which is the master version, it's not released yet, is not compatible anymore with tweak one. And then people uh, st started arguing that Twig 2 should be compatible with Twig 1. <laughs> That's what I said <laughs> two years ago. So yeah, I think it's, it's a big problem because even if I say Symphony, is going to, uh, Symphony 3 is going to use Twig 2, uh, it means that all the dependency that you are using in your project should also have a version compatible with Twig 2. And just because Twig 1 and Twig 2 is not, are not compatible, it means that you need two different versions of your open source library, and yours, you need to maintain those two versions, which is really not that cool, uh, especially for small libraries, really. Um, so the thing is, the language itself is compatible. So a template itself is compatible between Twig 1.x and Twig 2.x. It's not a problem. The problem is the way we um, create extensions. So if you have extensions, then it's not compatible. If you are just using uh, Twig, uh, the language, uh, that's not a problem. So what we are g trying to do right now is make the, ex the extensions compatible between the two versions, which should 
take care of 99% of all the use cases. Thank you.